Do you think so, maybe we should just ask Copilot or Chat GPT what their error rates are? <laughs> I mean, maybe. We'll see what they say. Yeah. Well, actually, they yeah. do it and send in your different answers that you get. <laughs> but that's the point. Most likely, yeah. we'll get different answers, right? Yeah. And, and yes. that's why I'm saying that. So the scientific method, too, we need to apply. So, so again, Brett is is correct. But I, the guys, the point I'm expanding on is the scientific method. It's not. It's not. It can't be from from my opinion at this point. It's a tentative opinion. Okay, people. Um, mm -hmm. Cannot be. I'm gonna do it the same way I do my other tools, where I look at the inputs and the outputs, and if they work, that's great. If they don't, I'm just gonna chug it. Um, because the, what about discovery issues, right? What about impeaching the process when you're only bias, your bias is being reaffirmed by selecting things that work and right. then totally dismissing the ones that not, that don't. Doesn't that tell you something about the process? Yeah. Of course it does, especially if you're on the mm -hmm. other side, right? So that's why I see the scientific method should be applied. The question is, how does the scientific method look in a applied in these circumstances right. with a system that has randomness built in it and repeatability is not guaranteed hallucinations are a, a big thing with this type of, of system where they just make things up and even if they you say well my llm actually references the source to make sure it's correct what tells you that the reference is correct or that the interpretation of that source data is correct and then the last part well you verify it sure but when you have a hundred thousand of them are you gonna verify them one by one